The Gospel of Wealth by Andrew Carnegie Welcome to your book summary.com. Economic growth and development are inevitable and desirable in a productive capitalist society. If the system functions properly, it separates the wealthy and the working class. Captains of industry fulfill their responsibilities by creating viable business opportunities that generate profit and provide a means of employment for the general public. Financial success enables corporate executives and leaders in other fields, such as the arts and literature, to live in larger homes and enjoy luxuries that exceed the laborer's grasp. This separation, however, reflects economic growth and the advancement of society rather than being an adverse situation. A capitalist system improves the quality of goods and services, lowers prices, and makes commodities infinitely more affordable. Although some may look back nostalgically to the days of greater equality among people, returning to those days would be nothing short of disastrous. Today's working-class family has access to necessities that even the rich saw as luxuries only a century ago. Unfortunately, industrial growth and economic expansion have a hefty price, particularly in interpersonal relationships. The widening gap between employer and employee becomes a fertile breeding ground for suspicion and mistrust. After all, the executive of a large operation with hundreds of employees cannot possibly have meaningful relationships with most of his workforce. As a result, employees become anonymous names and faces. Each side struggles to understand the plight of the other, and the inevitable outcome is a deterioration of the interpersonal dynamic. I hope you found the information about the Gospel of Wealth by Andrew Carnegie. If you're interested in learning more about the book, stay tuned for the next part of this series where we'll dive into the next section. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.